Gene and I have decided to take a break from trolling. We're up in the river arm. We're out of the boat now, and we've got out one rod armed with power bait, and we've got a slip bobber out with a night crawler underneath it. So far, we've had three or four bites on the power bait, and we've put one uh, one pan sized rainbow on the stringer. So we'll see if the action continues here. Oh yeah, we're getting hit right now. You can see that bobber. The reason I put that bobber there, you can see the bobber go up. And that fish isn't feeling much resistance as that bobber goes up to the pole. Now when that bobber gets up to the pole, Gene, or go ahead and take it off, give him a little slack. It'll just shake it right off. Grab the rod, set the hook, set, Gene, set. Set it, set it. Real man, Woohoo! Well, that's a little better fish, maybe. Awesome. So what'd you get that fish on, Gene? Rainbow power bait. Fishhuntshoot.com offers a variety of tackle as well as rods and reels designed to get you on more and bigger fish. Check it out today at fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. If you watch the channel, you know we do a lot of trolling for trout, either from my big Duckworth or from my Hobie kayak, stuff like that. Um, but I actually get a lot of questions from guys wanting to get into trout fishing and they're interested in bank fishing. So I'm going to do a series of videos right here today. I'm going to take you through all the basics, you know, surrounding bank fishing. So we're going to start off talking about bait fishing with power bait. You know, that's, that's the basic, basic power bait will catch trout almost anywhere they swim, particularly planted rainbow trout. It's mid-December. Um, this is a great time between now and spring. There's a lot of fish at a lot of lakes near the shoreline. Trout plants are underway at a lot of places. Collins Lake, Amador, on and on the list goes. So just chunking out some power bait is a great way to go if you want to get your feet wet in terms of trout fishing. So here's how you get started. I've got here, I've got one of my, my signature series two-piece six foot six inch spinning rods. These are available in the fish hunt shoot store, but you know you don't have to have one of these to catch trout. Um, you just need a light, medium light spinning rod um, between seven and six feet long. And you need that balance with a reel. In this case, I've got a, a 30 size spinning reel here. It holds about 175 yards of eight pound test. And that's what I've got it spooled up with. I've got eight pound um, trilene big game line on there. And uh, so once you've got that, it's time to put on some end tackle. And this is how I rig up for you know fishing both power bait and inflated worms off the bottom. I'm gonna step up closer to the camera here and just kind of take you through my rig. So, right here, you can use an egg sinker, one of those round egg sinkers. I find that they snag more than a, a bullet weight. So I use the kind of bullet weights that a black bass angler would use for, for putting out a Texas rigged worm. So first thing that goes on my line is the bullet weight. You know, anywhere from a quarter ounce up to a half ounce. I like to stay on the lighter side. This one here I think is three eighths of an ounce. So I slide that onto the main line. Then I put on a bead just to protect my knot. Then I knot on a barrel swivel. And to that barrel swivel, I knot on my leader, which is, um, in this case, eight pound test fluorocarbon line. Um, let me step back here. I always use fluorocarbon line. It doesn't always make a difference, but sometimes you have to be using it to get hit. Um, fluorocarbon, for you guys that don't know, <clears throat> it reflects light at the same rate that water does. And what that means is it's essentially invisible to fish. So always use fluorocarbon for the leader. I don't spool up with it. I use standard mono copolymer line to spool up with, but I run a fluorocarbon leader. Now, on the end of my leader, and I just had a, I just answered this question online today. A lot of guys use treble hooks for power bait and they work fantastic. But a guy asked me, do you need to use a treble hook? I never use them. Um, I just run with small octopus hooks. Um, I've never had a problem. I grew up fishing power bait in, in, in Bay Area lakes. Um, single octopus hooks have always worked well for me. Some guys say the bait comes off of them. When we bait up here in a second, I'll show you how I put the bait on. That's not an issue for me. Um, so I don't know what they're doing with their bait, but I'll show you how I use mine, how I bait up mine. So um, the knots on this, simple, just improved clinch knots. You can leave a little tag end. It's not important. 
just good solid clinch knots, keep your drag loose. That's your basic setup and leader length. That can make a difference sometimes. You know, on the short end, sometimes I'll go with like 14 inches. Sometimes I'll go all the way out to 36 inches. But my typical leader length is anywhere from 18 to 24 inches, maybe a little more. This one's probably 30 inches long today. A lot of times it doesn't matter, but it's definitely something that you can experiment with, you know, as you're out fishing, see what's working best. And if it makes a difference, you know, kind of dial your gear in accordingly. So let's bait up this hook. So I'm gonna grab my bottle of my bottle of power bait here rainbow rainbow power bait oh there's the label rainbow power bait um this stuff revolutionized trout fishing it's super simple to use it's super effective it floats up off the bottom that's what you want you want your bait floating up off the bottom i still got that little piece of paper in here so there's the bait i've been using some of it so what you do just take your finger you don't need any special tools guys sell special spoons and stuff for this whatever just get some power bait on your finger about that much okay let me put this jar away put the cap on here in fact i'll just toss that over there so take your power bait take your other hand put the dough in your hand just like that start rolling it around okay what you're looking to form is a ball anywhere from a quarter to three-eighths of an inch around putting a little bit of pressure on it. I like a nice round ball, just like that. Okay, there's your ball. So now, grab the end of your leader where your hook is, slide that up. Here's how I bait up with power bait. I never have a problem with this stuff coming off. Okay, I'm right-handed, so I take the ball in my left hand, take my hook, I kind of stick my hook in there like that, just like so, and I work it around the hook. And then I just kind of push it in to the hook like that. So it looks like that. You can see a little bit of the eye of the hook coming out right there. I smash the power bait right down tight around the eye. So it ends up with a little, a little point on the back of the ball. That's all formed around the eye of the hook. It's not coming off. It's going to stay put. It's going to stay on there. So... Let me move the camera and let's cast this out. And I got a couple tips about casting it out. So here we go, let me move this camera. Okay, we're all baited up. It's time to cast out. Now when you're fishing in the late fall, winter and early spring, you gotta keep in mind, the water temperature is low. It's probably here at, uh, at Sugar Pine, the water is probably in the middle 40s right now. So the trout are gonna be up near the surface and they're gonna be in near the shore. So you don't wanna haul off and cast it way out there and cast beyond the fish. I don't want this bait setting in 20 or 30 feet of water. I want this setting in five to 10 feet of water. That's gonna be about right. So what I advise doing when the water's cold, start out with short casts and progressively work deeper until you get hit. And along those lines, I like to stay on the move when I'm bait fishing. I'll fish a spot for about 30 minutes. I'll try some different distances offshore. I'll throw one rod out with power bait or an inflated worm. I'll fan cast with the other rod. If I don't get hit within 30, 45 minutes, I'll pack up my stuff and I'll start hiking and I'll get go hit another spot. You can be on one point and not get a bite and you can go to the next point and it can be wide open. So if you're not getting hit 30, 45 minutes, that's enough patience, pack up your stuff and move on. But I know this spot, I know it's about 30 feet deep out as far as I could cast. So I'm gonna fling this out here, maybe 25, 30 feet offshore. And that's gonna put me in about probably six to seven feet of water so you know i'm not i'm not hauling off and making a crazy cast i'm just gonna i'm just gonna lob it out there something like that blip yep that's just about 30 feet offshore now i'm letting that sink i'm kind of controlling it i'm watching the line it's dropping down there it goes hit the bottom right there so i'm in six seven eight feet of water now it's setting on the bottom now i've got a rod holder down here and I'll show you this after I have it all set up. I'll move the camera again. But I'm going to reel this line up. I'm going to get the slack out of it. Okay. I'm doing that right now. Now I'm going to put the rod in a rod holder. 
and I'm gonna hang a bobber between the eyes of the rod. It's gonna hold the line down, it's gonna control the line, but if a trout takes the bait, it's gonna allow the trout to swim off while feeling minimal resistance. You know, when you're fishing power bait, you're catching fish for the table, they're gonna swallow it. I don't want to give them any tightness in the line. I want them to be able to swim away without feeling any resistance. I want them to swallow the bait. I want to catch them, land them, put them on the stringer, take them home and eat them. It's the whole purpose of power bait, to put fish on the stringer. So let me throw this in the rod holder right here. Just like that, I got that rod up. That's a little over like 45 degrees. And I have my bobber here. And here's how I've got my bobber set up. It's just a standard, come back over here. Standard plastic bobber, just like the ones you'd use for bluegill fishing. But on one eye of the bobber, I've snapped in a snap swivel. And I'm just gonna take that, that snap, I'm gonna leave it open, I'm gonna hang it from the line. So let me uh, hang this on the line, I'll cut away, and then I'll just film the rod and the holder and uh, make a couple more points about that. Okay, here we are. I'm about 10 feet away from the rod, and I'll, I'll walk over closer to it. But you can see the, the rod holder there. It's just one of those orange spring jobs that you can buy in any tackle shop. I just stuck it down in the dirt there. The rod's going up at a pretty good angle, and you can see that bobber right there hanging off the line. So that's fishing. It's putting out that great power bait scent, and uh, this is going to give me a chance. While that soaks, I can, I can look over there with that bobber on the line, and at a second's notice, see if I'm getting hit, if I've had a hit. And if a fish takes that, that bobber is gonna inch up towards the rod and that fish is gonna be able to swim off while feeling zero resistance. I think you can see that better there. Now, while that's soaking, I'm gonna rig up another rod and I'm actually gonna do some fan casting. But uh, that's another video. But you can see the rod there sitting in its holder. Hopefully we're gonna get hit. Um, and like I say, we'll give that maybe 20 minutes or so, reel it in, bait up again, cast to another area, maybe try another color of power bait, but uh, that's pretty much it.